It is great to see you, Calvary. I'm going to invite you to take your Bible or your Bible app and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is our text today, and we'd love for you to be able to follow along. And if you're watching this and you don't have a Bible uh, or a Bible app on your device and you want a Bible to read, uh, just please contact us at Calvary. Email us, call us. Uh, we'll get a Bible to you one way or another. Uh, we'll deliver it to your house. We'll mail it to you. If you live in Hawaii, I'll bring it to you personally. Uh, that's kind of my commitment. But uh, we know that if you have the Word of God and read the Word of God, then God will change your life. Hey, we are concluding our pandemic playlist series this weekend. And uh, we've been looking at these phrases that have, you know, jumped into our vocabulary and kind of changed the way we talk and the way we think uh, as, a, as a culture and today we're talking about the new normal. The new normal. Is anybody else sick and tired of hearing about the new normal? I mean, now it's all about social distancing and face masks and shelter in place and this new normal that we're supposed to get used to and so many new rules. And I hate rules. I'm sure some of you do too. Everything changed so quickly. I mean, these last five months have been insane. Our new normal. And, and you know what? Calvary has embraced some elements of this new normal. I mean, we've, uh, you know, kind of started our online campus, and you're watching online today, and, and we are vested in having an online campus. That's going to be ongoing in the future uh, forever, as far as we know. And, and so we're, uh, we're planning for that. In fact, we're looking for an online campus director. And so if you know somebody, send them our way. Uh, and of course, we've closed all of our in-person worship, uh, 14 weeks and counting right now. Uh, it frustrates me, but, it, you know, I understand it's for our health, it's for our safety, and, and so we're continuing to do that. Calvary Christian Academy installed hand-washing stations all over the school. They've got dedicated classrooms, and honestly, with school getting ready to ramp up, we need to be praying for our teachers, for our students. This is a tough time in this quote-unquote new normal. So much has changed, and if we're honest, we really don't like these changes. I mean, that's normal. That's not new. We really don't like change most of the time, but sometimes we do like change. I mean, we should be used to change by now. It's been part of our world. It's something that is always changing, right? I mean, just think about this. Uh, think about telephones. Uh, how many of you actually used this party line phone at one point? See, I'm not old enough to actually have used that phone. Uh, I, I've seen pictures of them. I saw them in TV shows and in movies. I understood what they were, but I just never used one. Or, or how about the good old rotary phone? A lot of us grew up on the rotary phones. Uh, you know, hopefully you had the extra long cord and all that kind of stuff. I think one of the funniest things I've seen is when they ask a teenager to try and make a call on a rotary phone. They had no idea what to do. And then, of course, we graduated to the cordless phones. Cordless phones, what a miracle, what an invention. This was awesome. You could actually take the phone and go into your bedroom away from all the listening ears in your family. And then, of course, we got to those early cell phones, the flip phones. You remember the flip phones? The smaller, the better. They got so tiny, you could hide it in your hand. And then, of course, we moved to the smartphones. And we love our smartphones. In fact, they're kind of like attached to our hands now. and We can't put them down, but we want bigger screens so we can see it. So much has changed, and change is part of our world. And realistically, some of it we like, some of it we don't. Today, we're talking about change, because change is one of our core values here at Calvary. And here's what we believe. It is impossible to follow Jesus and stay the same. Change. It is impossible to follow Jesus and stay the same. Uh, if you'll look at the scripture that I referenced, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 17, here's what the Apostle Paul writes about change. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And because of this, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. And we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made him to be sin 
who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. You see, it is impossible to follow Jesus and stay the same. Change is inevitable. It's inevitable in our world. It's inevitable in our lives. And if you're a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus actually is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then change is inevitable for you. It's natural part of following Jesus. It's what happens in our lives because you heard the Apostle Paul say it, we are a new creation. See, that's why here at Calvary, we talk about experiencing a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a must. Your life's going to change because when you understand the reality of God and the grace of Jesus that he makes all things new, it changes your life completely. You see, change is not optional. It's part of the deal of being a Jesus follower. So I have to ask, have you become that new creation in Jesus? Have you experienced life change with God? Do you know that you're that new person because of him? If you have doubts about that or you know you haven't and you want to become that new creation, would you click that button that just popped up on your screen? If there's not a button or if you don't want to click that, would you email us at Calvary? You can actually go on our website, fill out a contact card and and indicate that you want to talk about a relationship with Jesus. I don't care if you just email me directly. Pastor Chad at CalvaryLHC.com. And and we'll respond to you because we want to talk with you about following Jesus. That's that's what we do. We want to help you follow Jesus. And and if you know that you're a follower of Jesus and you haven't been baptized yet, then I want to invite you to declare your faith in Jesus at the next Lake Baptism, Sunday, August 2nd at 6 p.m. at London Bridge Beach. Uh, We're going to have a redo because people, more people said, hey, we will get baptized, we'll get baptized in the lake. And we said, yes. We'll be glad to do that. Can we invite others? And so we're inviting you. But here's the thing. If you've become a new creation, here is what Jesus changes. Here is the new life normal for those of us who are followers of Jesus. So if you made a commitment to follow Jesus, then you have an altered identity. An altered identity. You see, when you confess Jesus, you are born spiritually as a child of God. The Apostle John put it this way in John chapter 1. He said, to as many as received Jesus, even to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Your your whole identity was changed in Jesus. Now you are a child of God. And guess what? This new identity in Jesus takes precedence over all other identifiers in your life. Let me say that again. Your new identity as a follower of Jesus takes precedence, takes priority over all other identifiers in your life. Your identity in Jesus is more important than your country of origin. You see, I'm an American, and I'm a proud American. I believe the United States of America is the greatest nation on the face of the earth. I love my country, but my first allegiance is to Jesus. Your identity in Jesus is more important than your your politics. Hey, look, I have my convictions. I'm going to vote my convictions. I pray that you'll vote your convictions. But my relationship with Jesus is more important than my political affiliation. Your identity in Jesus is more important than your race or your gender or your socioeconomic status or your job. You see, all of those other identifiers, you know what they do? Well, it doesn't matter if it's male or female or black or white or brown or Republican, Democrat, Libertarian. They all divide. They all create us versus them categories. But you know what Jesus does? Jesus unites us. That's why our identity needs to be in Jesus. He unites us. The Apostle Paul said this in Galatians chapter 3. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You're all one in Christ Jesus. He unites us. In Ephesians 2, he put it this way, for Christ himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Now, the Apostle Paul was talking about Jews and Gentiles, but there's a lot of walls of hostility in our world right now. And Jesus wants to unite us. You see, we are not American Christians and Chinese Christians. We're Christians. 
We are not Democrat Christians or Republican Christians or Libertarian Christians. We're just Christians. We're not rich Christians or poor Christians. We're Christians. We're not black, white, or brown Christians. We are followers of Jesus who have been united as the children of God, made one in Christ when Jesus is our identity. He breaks down the walls and he unites us. So let me ask you this. Has Jesus changed your identity? Better yet, does Jesus own your identity? You see, if you're a follower of Jesus, a new creation in him, he's going to alter your identity and he's going to alter your character. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have an altered character. It means we have new values, new worldview, which results in a radically different way of living when we follow Jesus. Now, in case you're wondering what that new way of living looks like, uh, God reveals that to us, again, through the Apostle Paul in Galatians 5, when he says, for the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, you don't even need law. You, you see, God wants us to own that identity as followers of Jesus, and when we do that, he changes our character as children of God. Uh, in fact, the Apostle Paul said, therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children. We're supposed to imitate Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is always teaching us. If you're a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you and he's always teaching us how to be more like Jesus. He wants that character of Jesus to be our character. And by the way, this is a required class. It's not optional. You know, some of you are like taking love 102. And some of you are like, you know, joy 201. You're really good at that. But you got peace 101. You're working on it right now. And, and you know who you are, the one who's got remedial patience. You see, as we follow Jesus, as we learn of Jesus, as we worship Jesus, as we pray to Jesus, who do you think we're supposed to become more like? Jesus. That's the answer. So are you more loving than you used to be? Really, are you more loving toward your family than you used to be? Are you more loving toward your coworkers or your boss than you used to be? How about this one? Are you more loving toward your enemies? Because Jesus even expects that. Even during this time of, of the pandemic, is your peace and joy growing in your life? Are you getting better at patience or worse? Or how about the hardest one? Self-control. How are you growing in self-control right now? See, I, I don't know, maybe you're like me, and uh, every time I go on a diet, I'm saying, I'm going to eat healthy now. Uh, I, I get irritated because I look at the grocery ads, and they put ice cream on sale. Just makes me mad. Uh, you see, the Holy Spirit is committed to teaching you the character of Jesus. Are you committed to learning the character of Jesus? Because if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a new creation in him, you've got an altered character, and you have an altered destiny. And alter destiny. This is the good part, okay? Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. You see, if you know Jesus, if you're a new creation in him, your destiny is changed. The reality is this. We deserve hell, okay? Because of our sins, because of our rebellion against God, we deserve hell. And I know some of you are thinking, yeah, but would a loving God really send people to hell? He doesn't have to because you and I have already purchased first class tickets to hell. That's what our rebellion earned us. That's what our, our defiance toward God gets us. The Apostle Paul put it this way, for the wages of sin is death. I earned it. But, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, this is the good news of the gospel that that. I deserve hell, but because of Jesus' death and resurrection, I get heaven. You deserve hell because of your rebellion and sins. And yet, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, because you're a new creation in him, you get heaven. We receive the gift of eternal life. This is the good news, that altered destiny. And by the way, for the record, heaven is better than you imagine it. It's better than you imagine. In fact, if kids are watching and you want something to do, draw pictures of heaven, okay? You can imagine it any way you want it but it's better than you imagine it. We get brand new bodies. That is such good news. It's 
especially if yours is starting to wear out like mine is. It, your new body is not going to have any flaws or any urges for self-destruction. And, and this usually brings up the question, hey, what's my body going to look like? What's it going to look like? I, I had the conversation with a guy one time. He says, I think we're going to look like our best selves. You know, he was thinking when he was younger and handsome. And I said, I hope not. I want to look a whole lot better than my best self. I, I've had some uh, people, especially ladies, who said, in heaven, will I be tall and thin? And, and, and I just tell them, it's not going to matter. You're not going to care. We might all be three foot tall and 300 pounds and look like little bowling balls rolling down the streets of gold. You won't care because it's heaven. It's perfect. There's no more suffering. There's no more sorrow. There's no more sickness. Isn't that good news? There's no more death. There's no more pain. There's no more politics. <laughs> Remember that in an election year. Everything is made new. And, and because of this reality of eternal life, because of our new destiny, this is why we can live without fear, even in fearful times. This is why we can ha always have hope. This is why we can be courageous, because we know that heaven is our destiny. And, and because of Jesus, nothing in this world can change that. So I hope you know that you have an altered destiny. And I hope you understand that if you are a new creation in Christ, you also have an altered purpose. An altered purpose. Look again at this passage we've been talking about. Verse 18 says, All this, all this new creation is from God, who through Jesus reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling, bringing the world to himself, not counting their trespasses and sins against them, and entrusting to me and you the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors for Christ. We have an altered purpose. Jesus died to reconcile me and you to God. The relationship was broken in Jesus' death. He brought us close so that we could have that life-changing relationship with God. And he gave to us the ministry and the message of reconciliation. What does that mean? If we've got an altered purpose, and that purpose is the ministry of reconciliation, what does that look like? It means two things primarily. First of all, it means that we tell people about the hope we have in Jesus. Look, if you're a new creation in Jesus, if you know Jesus has changed your life and forgiven your sins, you want, excuse me, you want other people to know that. You want them to know the, the life change that you've experienced and so you want to tell people about the hope you have in Jesus. You want to remind people every day that God loves you, that, that God forgives you, that God heals and restores and rebuilds your life, that God promises them heaven if they surrender to Jesus. That's our purpose, to let people know the good news. So are you telling anyone about the life change you've experienced in Jesus? Are you inviting anyone to be a follower of Jesus? It's so easy right now, especially with us being online. You can share this link with all of your friends. You can host a watch party. You can say, hey, come over to my house and watch this with me and we'll have dinner. Whatever you, you need to do, you can do this. But you have to actually make that effort by saying, God, I understand my altered purpose and I am going to be that person who's telling others about Jesus. Right now is an easy time to do that. People are afraid. They're afraid they're going to get sick. They're afraid they're going to die. And that opens up conversations about the hope we have in Jesus like no other time. I pray you're having some of those conversations. And then secondly, not only are we supposed to tell people about the hope we have in Jesus, but we need to be ambassadors for Jesus. Did, did you catch that? The beginning of verse 20, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. Through us. By the way... Um, ambassadors don't get to represent their thoughts, their politics, or their feelings. And so as ambassadors for Jesus, you and I are not supposed to be represent, representing our thoughts, our politics, our opinions, and our feelings. We are supposed to be representing Jesus. Always. All the time. Every situation. Every circumstance. We are Jesus' ambassadors. And that means that we live in the character of Jesus. You know what Jesus said? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Wait, we're supposed to be imitators of God as dearly loved children, so we're children of God. We need to be peacemakers if we're going to represent Jesus. And that means that we need to live in the character of Jesus. We need to share the hope of forgiveness in Jesus. And we need to be people who promote peace in the name of Jesus. That's our new purpose. So let me ask you, are you a peacemaker? Are you somebody who is an ambassador for peace? Are you promoting peace in your family? I mean, you can't really hide that when you're probably watching this with your family. Are you promoting peace in your family? Are you doing what you can to promote reconciliation and people getting along? What about on the job? Are you a peacemaker on the job? Or are you somebody who's busy talking about other employees and, and trying to undermine them? Or are you working for their benefit and being that peacemaker and trying to bring people together and, and promote forgiveness? Okay, this is a tough one. Are you a peacemaker on social media? Look, we all know social media right now is filled with divisiveness, with hostility, with anger. Are we being the voices that are contributing to that? Or are we being the voices of peace? Because some of us need to repent and start representing Jesus on social media. And by the way, when I say representing Jesus, please do not post those things about if you love Jesus, share this, okay? Because I'm not going to share it, neither is anybody else. It just drives us crazy. But we want to be the people who speak peace into life everywhere that we go. You see, to really be an ambassador for Jesus, we need a new attitude that becomes our new normal way of thinking and acting every day in life. And... Because it's the world we live in, we need to embrace change. Because it is impossible to follow Jesus and stay the same. Will you pray with me? Father, you know we're broken. You know we're hurting. You know a lot of us are afraid. But right now we pray that you would make that new identity in Jesus real in our lives. Help us to take hold of that new identity, to live out the new character to enjoy that, that reality of, of heaven as our destiny. And God, we want to embrace this new purpose and be those people of reconciliation that are telling others about Jesus and that are living our lives as peacemakers. We know that we need you because without you, we can't make this happen. But through you, all things are possible. So God, do the work in us that you need to do. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to worship our Savior.